So this is Mike Rampino. And I guess the big question that we have for you is your thought on the role of impacts and volcanism in causing mass, mass extinctions yes, in the Phanerozoic. Well, it's very interesting because uh, originally, when, when the KT boundary uh, was, was first noted that it was an impact layer, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I assumed, uh, I inferred, that this could be a general explanation, but you have other mass extinctions in the geologic record, you have one way to know very well it was an impact mm -hmm. at the KT boundary. And therefore, let's look at the other boundaries to see if you can find the same kind of evidence that's found for impact at the KT boundary. Mm -hmm. And I did that, especially at the Permian-Triassic boundary, the really big mass extinction, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find it. Hmm. No impact evidence. So yeah, after 30 years of uh, since the Alvarez hypothesis was first proposed, uh, the evidence of impact to other boundaries is still rather meager okay. uh, and uncertain. And uh, the other thing uh, that we were thinking about was flood basalts. Mm -hmm. And we looked, this is back in 1988, we looked at the dates that we had at that time, the best dates for flood basalts, the best radiometric dates, and uh, compared that to the time of, uh, of extinctions. And there seemed to be a pretty good correlation. Uh, for example, the Deccan and the Haiti boundary, the Siberian traps and the Permian Triassic boundary, and then other other lips as well. And so then we began to think, well, maybe it's a, it, there are two major causes of mass extinctions. One would be impact, of the KT would be a good example, mm -hmm. and the other would be the, the largest volcanic events that you can get, uh, flood basalts, mm -hmm. whether they're putting out CO2 and warming the climate, or aerosols, getting aerosols up into the upper atmosphere and cooling the climate. Mm -hmm. So that there's two, so sort two. of a double whammy uh, that you could have cooling, abrupt climate change that would produce changes enough to affect extinction. And then long-term climate change from the, from the CO2 that you're putting in the atmosphere. So it would be a short-term effect and a long-term effect. Mm -hmm. Mike, how, how, how does the, uh, the first thought start? Uh, how do you link the theory with the data that you, that you collect? How did you come up with uh, the theory of well, the two we, options? We noticed uh, with flood basalts, we noticed uh, the correlation as we see very well between the Deccan traps and the KT boundary and between the, the uh, uh, Siberian traps and the Permian Triassic boundary. So what we did then is, is, is uh, compile all the dates, all the ages, uh, radiometric ages for the other flood basalt events. We got the best, okay. there were there, at the time there was quite a spread of ages. So that's, it wasn't clear whether these events were, were short, a million years, or whether they were spread out over, over many millions of years, because the potassium argon dates were very, very uh, uncertain. But when argon argon dates started to come in, it, it became clear that the flood basalts were, were relatively short term events, less than a million years, maybe, maybe much less than a million years. And so it, it began to look like these could cause. Uh, if that much magma came out of the earth in such a short period of time, that this could cause a, a, a mass extinction or a climatic change that would lead to a mass extinction. And so we compiled all the radiometric ages and then compared the ages that we got for the flood basalts with the ages that were already known for the mass extinctions, and we found a pretty good correlation. So that means that the ideas are, in a way, were driven by the technology until you didn't have the argon argon. That's right, that's part and of uranium lead with the zircon yeah, yeah, and the deliite yeah, and all the right, high right. precision right. Right. to your phenomenon. When, when that started to come online, we got much better resolution uh, for the ages of the, of the, of the, of the large areas provinces. Yeah. So broadly speaking, because now we are in a decade, or the last two decades, we had a lot of improvements in technology, mm -hmm. we are going to have maybe new ideas pretty soon. Because of technology is driven, I and think so. New yeah, data. every every new technology uh, uh, drives new questions that can be begin to be answered by by the, the by the new technology by the technical advances. Which is the newest technologies that that you are working on nowadays? Well, I, I think uh, the the astro chronometry, which has become much uh, over the last few years. Uh, uh, much more detail, uh, enabling us to, to see cycles in, in, in the record and therefore to be able to see time periods 
as small as as part of a precession cycle, less than less than ten thousand years. And so, looking at some of the mass extinctions and doing cyclostratigraphy across the mass extinction layer, we can get an idea of how long it took. I mean, did these things go extinct over a relatively long period of time, gradually, or did they go extinct suddenly? And so far, what I found is that the Permian-Triassic boundary, the big mass extinction, that most of the species we can see, especially the Foraminifera, which, which are very abundant, uh, go extinct in a time period less than half a precession cycle, so less than 10,000 years. So it must be, if that's, if that's right, it must be something catastrophic. Something happens to the environment catastrophically. But so far, no evidence of an impact. So is it maybe the Siberian traps that are producing this change? We still don't know. I think the, the promising, uh, uh, most promising thing I'm seeing is the combination of the biostratigraphy and the magnetic stratigraphy with the astro chronology to be able to see, to judge, when you, when you can see these cycles, you can identify which cycles they are, precession, obliquity, or, or eccentricity cycles. You can then know what time period, on a very short time scale, very detailed, how much time you're dealing with. And I think that's gonna to lead to, to new, new results, yeah.